guys. We are in the forests of Slovakia. There's an old castle, like a ruins, just down the way. We scoped out this little little area in the forest. It seemed quiet enough to set up camp, so we did. When I say we, I mean me and Hansa, the uh, the representative from uh, Azib, the company that made this trike. This is my trike. This is what I'll be taking back to America and riding around. <sighs> Today I, I slept in the Nature Hike two-person tent. It's more compact. It packs down smaller. This one has one entryway in behind me, and uh, it was it was enough size for me for sure. I'm six foot two, 188 centimeters. Yeah, it's nice. Good ventilation. Uh, it didn't rain, so I didn't really see how that handles. But I'd also stayed in uh, this like is they call it the LW 180 XL. It's, it's a square-shaped uh, sleeping bag. One thing I really like about the square-shaped sleeping bags is that uh, you have room around your feet, you know? Typically, well, not typically, typically, but a, a lot of the sleeping bags I've had in the past, this is the, this is the width, you know, this is nice and wide. But a lot of them come to like a, a circle at the end, you know, like a curve. And you're, you always get trapped there. And I like to spread my legs apart when I'm sleeping. I don't like to keep them together. And so this was kind of a, a really, really nice, actually. I, I really like this, uh, this sleeping bag. And it's just enough weight to wear if you wear a, a sweatpants and, and, a, and a shirt or a sweatshirt. It's, it's enough. I mean, it doesn't get very cold here in Slovakia during this time of year, but I wasn't wanting for any sort of extra layer. This is not the type of sleeping bag that you'd want in a extreme cold, but it's perfect for lightweight camping and uh, camping in temperate, temperate climates. And the sleeping pad. The sleeping pad is like super, super tiny. And, uh, yeah. I'm really liking testing out these these tents and these products from Nature Hike. The reason, just in all honesty, the reason I'm talking about them so much is that um, Nature Hike and I are going to be working together on uh, future projects. The owner of Nature Hike is a friend of Annie. They went to high school together. And uh, so while I was in China, I actually saw Nature Hike sort of growing from nothing. Um, it was just sort of like a, a, high, a college project for, for uh, Xiaoji, the guy who owns it. And over time, he sort of become more and more interested in, in growing the brand and, and selling it more and more because it was higher quality and people were interested in it. And now it's like a, it's like an international company. It's just North America where you don't, know, you don't see it, but you see it in Europe and Africa and in Southeast Asia, everywhere. Um, anyways, let me tell you a couple of quick things. So the mat here that I'm sitting on and the tent and the rain fly all have these buckles and these buckles uh, lock into each other like like the little plastic buckles the rain fly buckles into the floor mat and it kind of like it holds everything together in a, in a nice little neat little package that's one thing I like about it the other thing that's kind of nice about it is is these like little twist clips they twist onto each pole very easily. You just kind of like put them in and then pop them in. Very, very quick. They're made out of plastic, which is lightweight. This whole tent is very, very lightweight, but, but that's very nice. Good materials, good tent, nice sleep. Yeah, not too bad for a, for a small two-person tent, two-child two tent.
one adult tent, <laughs> maybe. Good morning, Hansa. Good morning. What do we have for breakfast? Um, your favorite cheese. A crushed beer cans, some cheese, <laughs> and some rolls. So what's the ride like today? Tell, tell us so for everybody to join the video. Give them a little idea what to look forward to. The ride today. It's going to be a bit more hilly than we had yesterday. Less um, hilly than the first day though. Way less hilly. <laughs> yeah. The first day. And um, at the end should be one more castle or ruin of castle. What's the objective distance wise? It's like 60 k's, I guess. Okay. Either we go to Hodonin. Morning, think. Morning. Schnapps in the morning. Should be at the very at the beginning of the morning, but... You could have just poured it on my face when I'm I woke not, out. I'm not really using it so much. Whew. That will wake you up. There's a humming sound. You probably can't hear it inside. Let's see if we can be real quiet. I'll see that. A beehive or some sort of no. They just. It's the time of the. the yeah, they're all they they're really all working. To care about. I thought that I'd flown the drone so much last couple of days that <laughs> it was like you know when you when a, somebody shines a light in your eye and you can see that light after you close your eye. You know, like I felt like maybe I had that, but with the drone sound, and it was just, it was always there. Are you going to post this on Azub, your story? Hansa runs a, 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 a website called the recumbent.news, and uh, so he's doing his own little story about my journey. He wants to cover how I make videos on the road, so if you guys are curious about that, he's been showing how I pick up the drone, how I fly, how I shoot, how I... How I ride and, and and tell these little stories as I as I travel. So that that should be a fun video. I'm very curious to see what he comes up with. But I like traveling with people who are who are like video, telling their stories or telling a story too. It helps that he's telling a story about me. <laughs> Could you imagine if like the bugs got like 20 times bigger and smarter? <coughs> it would be. F Think of they they outnumber us like a million to one. You know. <laughs> Four and better something more. Okay. Nice little road this is. This is rustic. The air is clean. Hansa is up ahead. Hey, I had an idea for a video series, and I think we're gonna try a couple out while we're on the road. As part of my cooperation with Azov, I thought it'd be fun to accentuate their product <clears throat> and uh, share with you guys some of my journey under like a new title. We'll call it on the road with Azib. And anytime I'm riding on a trip, <clears throat> I'll do like a... Hey guys, it's Matt here on the road with Azib. We're in the Carpathian Mountains. He could do a whole bunch of things. Talk about gearing, technical things, talk about the journey, talk about life. Today, we want to actually talk to Hansa. So we're going to record a separate video, not this one, where we'll just focus on one topic. In this case, we'll talk about marketing for Azib how Hansa found Azub, Azub found Hansa, uh, what their vision is for the future of the brand and like what he does. Hopefully before I leave, I'll be able to talk to the sales manager, the owner, Alish, and just sort of give you guys a little under the hood of Azub because I think I've been pretty good on that. The series so far has really helped shed some light on who Azub is as a company, how they 
produce their products. Another thing I want to do today is I want to get Hansa on this thing and I want to try riding his uh, recumbent bike and get a feel for how the differences are between a bike and a trike. I also want him to try to ride this beast and see just how uh, I've got it set up because I know you know I might be heavy according to my thoughts but he might be uh, really heavy you know Oof. little zigzag here pick up some speed right in front of me. Hello. The Balkan feel. Yeah, but I have to, first I have to say, we are not in a Balkan country. It is just a kind of a Balkan feel for me because I like Balkan countries. The asphalt is no longer black as we have in yeah. Czech, mostly. A little worn. Uh, the, the houses are not in a long queue, like, like long line around the street, but there is a house, then house, then house again. Pretty much the same size, kind of little. Then you have a very old one, which hasn't been rebuilt it for tens of years yeah and then some extremely expensive monster you know with a BMW like a villa or even a Rolls Royce whatever standing next to it oh so it's like yeah that's what I like and loud music time to time yeah that's a nice and, uh, so you have a mixture of everything like yeah old and new all the new mixed together poor and rich and uh, yeah come on guy you can do it stop oh well there is a car coming i had a good start there yeah you had first time riding a recumbent bike it is not the first time right is it okay then i i should give you a, a lesson are you okay? Just put the handlebars down. Yeah, like this. All right, you follow me. Okay. Woo that wouldn't be... I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> easy. You are just on one place, so I can follow you easily. All right, let me try and start again. And then just coast down the hill a little bit. The first push has to be as long as possible. Yeah. And you should hold the handlebars not so tight, like relax, relax. Okay. You are a bit shaky, but very good. Well, how does it feel? It is bloody heavy up the hill. Yeah. Otherwise it's great. I yeah. mean, let me try it a bit, lo a bit longer. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. wonder how we will ride together on a like a flat road. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, riding the recumbent bike for the first time, you gotta have that balance issue. As soon as I went up, yeah, I sort yeah, of got yeah, stalled yeah. out. Very easy to use the camera, and also very easy to hit something, <laughs> because you do not look much. Where are you going, right? Where is Matt? Somewhere there. Do you want to switch it? Huh? Do you want to switch? Oh, okay, go. I'll see you at the top. Okay, at the top. How do you feel about the bike? It's different. It works different parts of your legs. A little bit, I think. It's just a different feeling. I realize I haven't ridden an uh, actual two-wheel bike in quite some time. There's all sorts of balance issues you got to watch out for. Stopped in, the, stopped in the perfect spot to get mauled. So the bike had to be short for you and the trike was too long for me. Uh, 
So then yeah. maybe you feel because then if 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 it's too short, you can't really relax while you know having the uh, like shortening the distance yeah. when you pedal in the half turn. You cannot really relax enough. Yeah. If the track is too short or bike as well, you get tired faster. But it's also about balance. You don't have to balance on this. And there's all yeah, sorts true. of muscles that are yeah, involved used. in balance. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. All right, back home. Back home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was weird. That was weird. Easy in some ways, harder in others. But I'll tell you what. For this kind of stuff, the trike all the way. I was trying to balance. I was I was trying to balance on that thing, and in my mind, think about how would I fly the drone? How would I have a conversation on the camera? How would I videotape anything I see? And there's a whole lot of things you got to think about when you have two wheels that you don't have to think about when you have three. And that is the that is a God's honest truth right there. So I see that there's like a there's like a monument on top of that yeah. hill. What is it? What is it uh, in commemoration of? Milan Rostislav Stefanik, who died in uh, airplane crash on that hill. If I'm right, so he was one of the two originators of main main guys. Slovakia and Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Little quaint place to grab a beer and a cup of coffee. We had planned to like make a whole bunch of videos while we were on the road, but. Um, our idea was we'll, we'll ride for the day and then we'll stop at the end and then before we go to camp and set up we'll record a video but unfortunately we end up like so tired at the end of the day that we're like you want to shoot a video no I don't want to shoot a video do you want to shoot a video no, I don't want to shoot a video <laughs> like we'll do it tomorrow well tomorrow this is this is the third tomorrow about time we made a video so we're gonna make a, we're gonna make a separate video other than the vlog how have you guys liked the vlogs vlogs have been good the last few days I wish I could do this all the time if if you guys out there have contacts with like tour agencies or tourist uh, divisions and governments or whatever I would love to just fly around bring my vehicle whether it's a trike or the van or whatever, and uh, just tour around at the whim of somebody who knows the area better than me. That'd be, very, that'd be a very cool living. And I'd make videos, they'd be fun for the channel, they'd be good for them. Win, win, win. We got invited to have some, some beers with some friends here at the bar. And uh, he is a journalist, and he makes, he makes a publication called Dymac. It's about beekeeping in Slovakia and we were talking about how you niche down topics like beekeeping in Slovakia. That's a cool topic. He has, he has 3,000 publications that go out every month. He ordered us another round of beer. So we've got to eat some dinner. Hanza, what did you say we have to try? I have to try? Halushki. Halushki. That's a Slovakian national food. Is it potato and vegetable? It's, it's and not potato. It's it's made of potato, but it's like uh, dumplings. Um, okay. Uh, mm. Yeah, and then the cheese, and then the brinza cheese on it. You guys like your beer around here. Zanetala, že vás zavolala k nám na kopanici. Ne, to nedáme. Abyste se vybali. Abyste se vybali.
<laughs> but we don't have armor. <laughs> we will drink is this, we, what is this? We, we will drink this. What is this? Uh, this is little bit. This is what you get in the morning from me. This, this is but my, this is like God. triple the shot. Ponza. This is my contribution Kapurkova. of your, uh, of your <laughs> discovering the Slovak uh, regions <laughs> and Kopanice. Okay, Hansa, come on, buddy. <laughs> We gotta get rid of all of it at one time. <laughs> oh, deep breath, Matt. Deep breath. This is gonna be a long night. Holy shit, this is not what I was prepared for. Okay, cheers. Cheers, papci. Napreteki, hey? Napreteki. For the race. Oh. On the race. The race to the bathroom. It's not so. It's not so far. It's a. Five kilometers from so I told them that uh, in in foreign countries as an American it's very easy to get along because everybody speaks English most people try to speak English his his son speaks speaks English quite well in high school and he said okay fine we're done speaking English we're gonna speak Slovakian try to figure it out <laughs> and so I think I dug myself a little hole Man, there's so many interesting people, and it's very interesting because his uh, his son speaks really, really good English. I was thinking about how if you're American and you're afraid of travel, you really need to think because as Americans, we have the greatest ability to travel. English is a ubiquitous language, and even in countries that don't have their English as a native language, you'll find people that will bend over backwards to try to speak to you. That's really an advantage that I don't think a lot of uh, people that speak native English realize. A lot of people in America are afraid to travel, but I'm, I think like one of the biggest fears is communication, right? And when the whole world is trying to basically speak English, you're, you have a huge advantage. It is also in you know, description of food, or products that you buy in yeah. the local store. Most of it in Europe is in English. Yeah. And then, of course, there are some exceptions. There are countries like Israel. They are basically very uh, isolated. Yeah. So yeah. they don't, they import something, but what they produce locally, and it's not really exported, yeah. it has only uh, the description in Hebrew, and then you are like, oh, there is no Czech, yeah. no English, no German, yeah. and you are stuck. But it's a very, it's only very few countries that where we or where I experience it. Think about Hansa here. Like, okay, let's say you didn't know any English. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. You only spoke Czech, Czech, yeah. Czech language. How many countries would you have a difficulty in? Like, you understand Every. English, but you can't go anywhere in here, Czech, unless you are... Well, you can go, in our case, you can go Poland. I mean, I go to Vietnam and people will be like, oh, you speak English? Not everywhere, but in a lot of, a lot more places that speak Czech, you know? Of course. You know, it's... Uh, like it, everywhere. Yeah, so if you're watching this from America and you're worried about how to fit in, Man, trust me, there's a lot of other people who have a lot of more difficulty that yeah. go out into the world and, and see it, that language is something they get over. And you speak English, everybody speaks English. Not everybody, but a lot of people, a lot more than others. So where are we going? Hey guys, I'm back on the road. I say back on the road because we've been off the road a couple of times. First for those those fun fellas and their beer and their uh, schnapps and their beer, and then we stop for ice cream. When I'm in a state of inebriation, slightly like when I've drank a little bit, oh, everything's slower. Everything's slower. 
it just feels like I just don't have any energy in the tank. But it's beautiful, so that's the way it's gonna be. I hope I don't slow down Hansa much. Plus, every time you stop, your knees just, they get a little harder, and then you gotta soften them up again, and then you stop, they get a little harder, and then you gotta soften them up again. It's a process. Every day we go through just an enormous variety of landscapes from open fields, jeep trails, you know, mountain terrain, rocks, rubble, tarmac highways, villages, cities, towns, <laughs> cobblestone, the whole nine. It's pretty cool. The sounds in these woods, really, really nice. I do feel like I'm sort of in Robin Hood or something, you know? I'm riding through. I gotta look out for marauders, archers, but hopefully Robin Hood won't look at me as one of the, one of the hoity-toity that he needs to uh, relieve from his accrued wealth. We should give back to the commoners. Do your part. All I can say is that this ride is really cool. The variety of uh, <laughs> roads just on this path. The variety of paths. You can go to like the wheel cutting through the weeds. Then you got a nice flat road. You know, it's not like paved, but it's pretty nice. Then you get to stuff like this. And you're riding through. <laughs> Wild. Hans is saying that in this area, back in the 6th and 7th century, I guess, there were steps here. You can see the remnants of them in the woods. But they were like terraced farmland right where we're riding right now. Sure looks a lot different now. Like you can see that area over there is a step. The world keeps a changing. It does not rest for any man or woman, that's for sure. I ride on a trike for 10 years. I never have to push it. I meet Hansa for a few days, and look what happens. boss where are we gonna camp for the night yeah uh, either uh, we find a place there or uh, there was the place with, with all the kids the kids or there was one a bit higher yeah so there are several options, options? well we can scope out the castle yeah. I don't even kind of don't even think I need the drone here yeah you know like we are the drone what is is that a power plant that must be oh, that's, uh, they make uh, cement in there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. A quarry. A quarry. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Down there. Don't go. Oi. You just crapped a phone. I like this kind of a castle. The ruins, you know. Time is taking it. Oh, oh right here? Whoa. Is it possible? Oh, I thought it was gonna open up differently. 
Careful. We can do it here. Or I show you another place. You just go around the top. So give you a little tour. Well, we ain't getting the trikes over uh, the trike over this. No, no. No, there we can go there differently. What a spot! Somebody had to build this castle with like very little tools, you know. So the king would sit up there and he would say, "My minions." I want Hans and Matt to do them to the death. And then he'd throw us a couple of swords, let loose the lions, and the crowd goes wild. All right, camp. Camp. Pretty cool. Been on a lot of interesting camps in my world, in my life, but camping in a Slovakian castle is uh, not one of them. I gotta imagine, like, think about what, what was going on here, what, 500 years ago? Even more. Yeah. Probably. I mean, people were, no one was allowed to sleep out here. Like, there were people sleeping here. I mean, this was, well, there were rooms up there. Yeah, but uh, nobody was allowed in this area unless you were probably either a allowed, helper allowed or, 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 yeah. you were, or you were allowed, or you were one of the, one of the family. No entrance for unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> no. What, 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 you saw that in one of the uh, campsites you stayed at? No, that's like a common sign when uh, in Czech. Yeah. It's tra translated something like no entrance, no entrance for, for unemployed. unemployed and i always say like i, got a I am employed so i, got a I can go <laughs> but it's like oh right no, right we no were at the entrance, power plant place or whatever no, no yeah. entrance for anybody that for the stuff yeah yeah, yeah 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 so that's but they word it unemployed unemployed yeah, yeah. tents or uh, no tents tents we can do yeah i don't know whether fire in such a wind yeah uh, all right guys that was a pretty quick uh, <laughs> ending but it was very windy we had to put our tents together uh the, this castle is like sitting on the top here and the wind's just basically cyclones so uh it was sort of fun to put this thing together but we're gonna go to sleep uh, tomorrow is our last day of this cycling tour feeling pretty good it's been really really exciting as you've seen one more day and then uh, we have to do some work at azub and uh, then we'll be headed to the airport, head back to the, uh, the United States. Bittersweet, bittersweet, but a lot of fun. Uh, like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Hit the little bell. I appreciate y'all. We'll talk to you later. Bye.